Good afternoon, everyone. I'm sure a few of you have questions about um, some of the head coaching interview stuff. And uh, it's, it's, listen, it's, it's an honor and a privilege to be a part of those conversations and be a part of that process. Um, but really, that's all I have to add on it. You know, my focus today and this week is really on getting our guys ready for Minnesota and the week ahead and today's practice. So um, that's really all happening. I, I really appreciate, you know, you guys respecting that part of it. You intend to do those eventually, then potentially next week? Yeah, I really have nothing else to add on the, on the head coaching side of it. Mike, it, it's easy to look at, at the last game and the Vikings in particular and say, you know, don't let Patrick Peterson beat you. You know, he did on that one route in particular yeah. down the stretch. How do you, you know, do your best to not let an all pro yeah. like that impact, impact the game? Yeah, he, I mean, he's a talented player. He's probably going to be the Hall of Famer. Um, and you know, all pro, printing all pro, all over the field makes plays. He's a smart, instinctive player. So we just got to be, um, we have to be smart with what we do and uh, make sure our guys are detailed with, um, you know, what things we want to present that defense. Would it help the second time around to see him and them so closely? Mm -hmm. um, sure. It's, you know, it's, it's definitely, it's, it's a couple of things. It's, we've done it a couple of times this year already uh, with quick turnaround. So it's one of those things where you evaluate it and you, you know, make sure you have some complimentary stuff and maybe some stuff they haven't seen. Mike, you, Mike, you threw 42 times the <clears> first <throat> time you played the Vikings. Does that necessarily mean the game plan is predicated on what you did the first time? Um, I don't, not necessarily. You know, every week's, every week's a little bit different. And, you know, we got to make sure that we, we go through our process on evaluating, um, you know, what our guys do best, go through our game plan and make sure we have enough stuff for um, our guys to attack them, whether it's inside, outside, down the field, short, intermediate. So you just got to cover your bases and make sure you have complimentary stuff from stuff that you've done and stuff that you're good at. Mike, your receiving core has been maligned nationally, not necessarily around here as much, but mm -hmm. just because of you know the, the moving parts and stuff like that and the injury situations. Can you speak to the job that those guys have done and uh, if there's a chip on the shoulder in that room a little bit? Yeah, f first off, I mean, those guys, they put a lot of time in the studying and prepping themselves. Um, getting on the same page with with the quarterback room, and then I think Coach Groh's done a great job of um, of getting those guys together as well, and coaching the fundamentals and the techniques that we stress. Do you do you feel like there's a you know obviously there's questions for those guys, but you know whether if there is a little bit of a you know we can show show people we can do kind of thing, and how difficult has it been for you to mm -hmm. move you know bringing these guys back and forth and up and down? Yeah, I think you know any you know when you're playing football, you you want to play with emotion, you want to play. Um, you know, with with um, you know a certain attitude, and I think you know those guys bring it. They you know they bring it to practice every day, and they've been bringing it all season long. Mike, from an offensive coordinator's perspective, what makes Wink very good at what he does mm -hmm. on the defensive side? Yeah, he 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 mixes a lot of um, not only just pressures, but putting his personnel in different spots. Um, he does a nice job mixing and matching those type of groups and different pressure pressure packages that make it difficult and then tying in the back end part of it and the coverage, the fronts. I mean, that's what ends up ma making it really difficult is they're so multiple. When you've seen Minnesota have a rematch against their division opponents, has mm -hmm. their defense changed a lot in the second game or are they a team that kind of does what they do? Yeah, I, that's that's a good question. I think um, I think there's times where they do a little bit of both. Uh, I wouldn't say one way or the other. I think um, Coach Downtown is a, a talented coach. I was, you know, had to play against them in the division when I was in Kansas City. And so, I'm, you know, I know that those guys are well coached and um, they have good scheme. They do a nice job on defense and creating turnovers and they got us a couple times. So we'll be working to fix those things and um, making sure our guys are in the right spot. What you guys the key? <clears throat> What's the key when you face a guy like Zadarius Smith who they move around so much? What's mm -hmm. the key from the offensive side when you have a guy like that? Yeah, you gotta, you gotta know where he's at every single play between him and Daniel Hunter. I mean, those guys are talented edge rushers production wise. Um, and you know they do a good job in the run game as well. So you got to know where those guys are at in every single snap. Mike, last guys, week you talked about the idea of when you guys set out to build this offense, it was you know a lot of plays off and options off of the specific plays that you run. Mm -hmm. When you go into a, a rematch, so to speak, against a team you've seen, does that create an advantage for you guys, or at least give you more flexibility to know that what you did the first time, you could still run that, but you have things that, that kind yeah, of come it, off that they may not be anticipating. It certainly gives you more flexibility um, because you've seen looks, you've seen how they may have uh, defended a certain thing. So, you know, you want to, you know, maybe use those techniques, maybe use some of the leverages that you've had 
to your advantage, whether in the run game, pass game, run action, RPO. So there's a few different schemes you can use to try and tie in, whether it's run game and drop back game, that end up, you know, maybe benefiting you down the road. Did you feel like you had a, <clears throat> you had a good game plan? You had a season high in yards in that game, left mm -hmm. some points on the board. But did you feel like that was one of your best offensive games of the year, get, take away the turnovers? Yeah, I think, you know, that's a good one. I, th I think, you know, the end result wasn't really what we wanted. So I think we got to find ways to clean up some of the stuff that probably didn't go as well. You know, I think when you look at when we're executing, that's great. That's where, you know, that's our expectation. And, um, you know, so we're really focusing on how we can get better at those little things that maybe um, didn't go as well during that game. Does, does that go beyond the two turnovers? I mean, were there more things beyond those two there, turnovers? There's, there's, always, there's always something you can work on, you know, and, and we look at it, we are really critical of that with, with every game really. And, you know, speaking on that game specifically, go back to the critical fundamental, your techniques, how are we running the ball? How are we throwing the ball? How can we build off those things? Um, you know, do we have the right guys in the right spots? You know, we, we go through that process so much that, um, you know, that, that's what really, for us, that's what we look at so, so much. We like, we detail that up and, you know, make sure that we feel good about it going into the game. When you look back at that matchup between Evan and Hunter, mm -hmm. uh, like how much of a focus is that going to be this time around? Like whether it's giving him help or things he needs to do differently because it seemed like that was uh, a challenge for him. Yeah, every week you gotta, you gotta go in with a plan. Um, and Evan's, you know, no different. He, he goes and he comes to work every single day, working on his fundamentals and t techniques. And he's going to work on those things and um, that he saw on the tape and work to fix it. And that's what he's doing. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy where he's been the t uh, from yesterday and today. Mike, you, know, you aren't the only team that's left points <clears throat> on, uh, off the board against them. It, it, that, are they a particularly good red zone team? There seems to be that seems to be a bit of a theme there. I know the Jets were there and mm -hmm. were down there a bunch of times. Couldn't yeah. get, couldn't get in. Yeah, well, that's that's a point of better. emphasis today. You know, that's what we're working on today with our game plan to make sure we can go down there and execute. What, what makes them good though? In the red zone is probably mm -hmm. where I was going with that. What makes them well, so good? Well, they have they have good players and they have a good scheme and they're they're pretty sound on what they do. So the execution level has to go up an extra notch to be able to to be able to convert in those situations. Hodgins had one of his best games of the season against Minnesota. What allowed him to be so successful that week and has yeah. continued to progress? Isaiah is one of those guys that really is um, very dependable. He's a, he's a tough kid. He can play multiple spots inside and outside. So he has some flexibility within the offense. And I think, you know, he's just like a lot of those guys in that room. He's gained the trust of Daniel and they have a, you know, they have a little good thing going right now. And so, you know, we'll keep, we'll continue to build that. Mike, most of us didn't. Most of us didn't really pay that much attention to last week because mm -hmm. it didn't have a lot of meaning. When a guy like Cager has a big game, does he become more of an option? Yeah, you know, every every week we'll, we'll look at the personnel groupings and see if we can find a you know find an edge for us. Um, Cager's you know done that in the past and he had, he had a nice one last week, but you know that's on a week to week basis where we're evaluating that personnel grouping. You were talking about Peterson obviously and, mm -hmm. and the way he was challenging but mm -hmm. Isaiah really didn't back down from that and it seemed like that kind of opened up some eyes to Isaiah's game did you guys know going in that he was going to attack the way he did against a guy like Peterson I would imagine some yeah. of the younger guys might might back off a little bit not you know yeah. be a little wary of a guy like that right I think Isaiah's he's a competitive competitive uh, football player I don't think you know it necessarily it was for that game specifically but I mean you see it on tape he competes versus all corners and linebackers and safeties and, you know, in the run game, he's just a competitive player. Mike, with the, with the coaching interviews, do you <clears> not <throat> spend a minute preparing for those until next week, or do you juggle it? Do you do an hour at night, you yeah. know, something like that, like getting ready? I, I understand that. I just have nothing else to add from what I said earlier today. One more question regarding yeah, How valuable, obviously you have a career, but how valuable would a consideration be of maintaining continuity for Daniel and for an offense for you to stay or leave? Um, again, that kind of falls under the head coaching part of it. I have really nothing else to add from earlier today.